how to get the best sound quality out of DJ Pro. I'm DJ Spiegelspin, and I'm gonna show you how. As DJs, it is our job to make sure that the sound coming out of our equipment is crisp, clean, and sounds good. If we have bad quality sound coming out, nobody's gonna wanna dance, nobody's gonna wanna hire us for new gigs. So DJ Pro has some settings and some things to watch out for to ensure that we get the best quality audio. So if you go over here, you could see the user manual. Now this is the complete user manual at the app and all the way at the bottom, they give us some tips and tricks. So I've read these all and I'm gonna share them with you guys. So first thing I wanna cover is there's some settings in in the settings menu that will help us keep our audio crisp and clean. All right, so number one is the audio limiter. This will prevent the songs from clipping and distorting if it's too loud, so it'll automatically limit the sound. So if you guys are playing with really big speakers and expensive equipment, you're gonna wanna be careful not to break it because if you're DJing at a club or somewhere and you break their sound system, you're probably not getting hired again. And so another thing that they added with the version four update is the output headroom. So this reduces the output level again to reduce clipping. So you could do minus six decibels or minus 12 decibels. So test this out when you're using big speakers and big equipment. You're not really gonna notice it if you're just using the speakers on the iPad. Another thing to keep in mind is auto gain. This will automatically adjust the gain for us, which is important with this app because as you see down here, the gain controls are really, really small on the touch screen. And a lot of, a lot of the smaller controllers like, like this DJ to go to touch, they don't even have a gain control. So it would be really hard to do the gain manually so with DJ Pro, we have this setting to keep it on auto gain. Okay, so now another thing that I wanna discuss, which is very important, has to do with these wires. Wires, the, having the correct wires and having high quality wires is gonna make a huge difference in the quality of your DJ sets. And keep in mind, different speakers, different mixers, and different controllers are gonna use different types of wires. So for example, this is the DJ to go to touch by Newmark. And this one has a regular standard like headphone port for the output. So it's gonna use one of these, which is just an auxiliary wire that you would use if you're playing music in the car or something. And it is less, qu lower quality than these inputs that are balanced RCA inputs right there. So this controller, the Reloop Buddy, is going to use these type of wires. So there, you could get these type of wires for a couple of dollars, or you could get wires that are $50, $75, and the quality is gonna be completely different. So if you look at the quality on this one, this is a more expensive one. This is not the most expensive one, but this is a decent one. And now this is one that I just found that I think came with an old, um, like one of those old DVD players with the screens. And if you look how thin it is, and it just looks like a cheaper wire. Another thing that you guys are gonna have to keep in mind is these adapters. So there's all different types of adapters. And now if you're like me and you only DJ with the iPad, you're gonna need these adapters because Apple thought it was a great idea to get rid of the headphone jack. So now our only our only place to plug stuff in is this USB-C port, which is good because we could use external storage devices. It gives us the ability to map controllers, but now if we want different inputs, we don't have our headphone jack anymore. So it used to be you could plug a controller into the into the lightning adapter, and then you could plug the have the audio come out of the iPad directly into the speakers, hardwired into the speakers with that handy headphone jack. Now we don't have that. So in order to, to input music 
you're going to need one of these adapters. So th this is a USB-C to audio cable adapter. So if you wanted to just DJ with your iPad, no controller, and then have this plugged into the speakers, that's what you would have to do. But these can range, you could get these at like the dollar store or five below, or you could spend $40, $50 at the Apple store to get better quality ones. I've had ones that just straight that I ordered online that just straight up didn't work. So make sure you guys have high quality, high quality adapters. Make sure your port that there's no dust in it or anything so that it actually reads the output and doesn't get wiggled out easily. Because if this is how all your music is coming out and then the wire gets bent or it's just not good quality, your whole set is gonna be distorted and you're gonna hear feedback and it's just gonna ruin the whole thing. Also, keep in mind that if you wanted to use headphones with this, with the iPad and no controller, you would need a separate adapter that plugs in to the, you would need a USB-C adapter like this, and then another adapter to plug in to have the output and have your headphones. And in my experience, it just didn't work. It was way too many adapters, way too much things that could go long, could go wrong. So make sure to keep it simple and try to use as little wires as possible and make sure that you use high quality wires. Another thing is speakers. So this speaker is great for if I'm in my backyard, a little barbecue, relaxing, stuff like that. But if you're gonna DJ, you're gonna want the bass, you're gonna wanna feel the bass drop and you're gonna want your music to be loud. And this speaker is simply just not loud enough. So it, a good rule of thumb if you're doing a mobile gig is to have at least five, five five watts per person so if this is a 20 watt speaker you could expect to dj for four people and then if you're doing a party with 100 people you're going to need 500 watts and also keep in mind that out outdoors is gonna you're gonna lose more of those watts than if you are indoors and be mindful when you're setting up your equipment about echoes and the natural reverb in the room if you're doing DJing in a big hall or something and keep in mind where you place your setup and where your speakers are are pointed so they should be pointed at the audience coming into the center and now that they've given us this booth output if you go over here to audio device setting you could have a booth output so now you could have speakers pointed perfectly towards the audience and then you could have one speaker pointed towards you so you could hear what's actually going on without having to hear what the audience is hearing. So definitely keep that in mind too. And now they added the microphone section. So what I did was I used and I had a USB-C adapter. I plugged in my microphone, the one that I used to make these videos. I plugged it into the iPad and it read it. And then my output was coming out of a Bluetooth speaker and I was I was pretty excited, me and my wife were gonna do some karaoke, but we kept getting echoes, the app kept crashing, so make sure you test out this microphone mode. They might have to update it or something, but for me, it was not good quality, it was echoing, and it made the app cr crash a lot. Another thing to keep in mind is your levels. So if you look over here, you have these two bars that are going up. If you turn up the bass all the way, and if you turn up the gain all the way, you see up there, we're redlining. So what that means is anytime you see the red, it's gonna clip parts of the song so that so that it could be able to play it, but it's gonna be distorted. So you're gonna get like distorted kind of cheap sound. Like if you were listening to music on your phone or some type of really cheap speaker, that's what it's gonna sound like because you are past the limits. And this could be very dangerous because if you're hooked up to an expensive, let's say you got an expensive sound bar at your house and you want to practice your DJing, you could blow that speaker. And also if you're at the club on a $10,000 sound system and you redline and break their speakers, you could be liable to pay for them You and you're definitely not going to get higher there again. So the trick is to go all the way right before. You want it to be as loud as possible, but you do not want any of the red. So a lot of people don't realize that these little tiny knobs here are the gains, so you could always cut it back and cut it forward. But I just keep it in, I just keep it in auto gain mode, so it'll automatically adjust it because they made these buttons 
these knobs really hard to use. But a trick is that you don't have to touch the whole knob, you just have to touch it once, and then now you could control it from anywhere on the screen until you let go. So keep that in mind too. Always watch these levels, and it'll be a good way, it's another visual cue to tell if your songs are mixed together if they're, both tracks are going up and down evenly. So I hope this helped you guys out. If you guys have any tips that I left out, uh, let me know in the comments. And I'm making DJ videos every day about DJing on the iPad and DJing with streaming services and all that DJ Pro has to offer. So subscribe to the channel. Give this video a like.